Revelation chapter 4. We're going to be talking about dinosaurs now. And you're going to find some interesting things in the Bible, what the Bible connects dinosaurs with the devil. So I already did a teaching on that, about dinosaurs, how they come out in the beginning, how it was likely that they could have been there at the beginning before Adam, as well as sometime at the tribulation as well, which is very fascinating. But now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about these dragons and dinosaur. Let's start off with Revelation 4. This is where we lay the foundation, first of all. Revelation chapter 4, and we will read verse 7. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. In Revelation chapter 4, we saw verses 7 through 8, the list of the four cherubs. If you compare that with Ezekiel 1, it actually calls them cherubs, the four cherubs. However, you got to realize this, is that even though these four cherubs are listed, there's one more cherub. But he's not up there. Revelation 4 shows four cherubs in heaven. But there were actually five. Why? Because Satan is the fifth one. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28. So there were five cherubs then. Ezekiel chapter 28. And once you get to Ezekiel 28, you're going to look at verse 14. Ezekiel chapter 28. And we will read verse 14. He's nice. If you Lucifer, we're going to find out he is known as the fifth cherub. But you're going to notice something very special here. These cherubs cover specific classes of creatures. Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse 14, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. All right, who is this anointed cherub? It's Satan, because read verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Which cherub was perfect in God's ways but then fell from heaven? Well, that's Satan, Lucifer, so we know that. Now, if you go back to Revelation chapter 4, and when you look at verses 7 through 8, Look at these classes of creatures. You'll see a lion covered right there. So wild, you'll see wild mammals covered right here. L wild land animals. Second beast, like a cat. You'll see a domesticated land animal here. The third beast had a face as a man. So you cover humans right here. And the fourth, fourth beast was like a flying eagle. You got the birds covered right here. Now, when you look at all of God's creation of creatures. You'll see that these four cherubs don't cover everything. They cover the flying animals, they cover the birds, they cover domesticated and wild mammals, land animals. They also cover man. But there is a certain class that they're missing, aqu aquatic type of animals and reptiles. So you can guess then which kingdom the fifth cherub would cover. He would have to cover the aquatic reptilian type. Strange when you study aliens and weird stuff like that, what they're called, reptilians. Weird, right? So, we'll notice right here that he must cover the aquatic reptilian type. No, you just made that up, preacher. That's just guesswork. No, look at the book of Isaiah. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 27 and verse 1. You just made that up, preacher. No, I did not make it up. You just don't know much Bible. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. I'm not saying that I figured this out. I'm smarter than everybody. No, this I've learned this from other Bible-believing teachers and preachers. I'm just blessed to have learned this. But people out there, you haven't learned it, right? Mm -hmm. Now do you see why it's important to get involved in a Bible-believing church Amen. with Bible-believing pastors that can actually feed you? not just give you ditty devotionals. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. 
In that day, the Lord with the sore and great and strong sword shall punish who? Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Well, that's obviously Satan. God's going to punish Satan, who's known as the serpent at Genesis 3, right? But let's keep reading. Serpent, reptile, right? Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, reptile. And ye shall slay the dragon, reptile, that is what? In the sea, aquatic. So he is an aquatic reptilian right here. Now we're going to look at the book of Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. It is interesting in the Bible how God always condemned the aquatic reptilian. Aquatic reptilian. You'll also notice what's interesting is that when you study certain conspiracies, what do they cover a lot about the aquatic era as well as reptilians? Where did such wording come from? And why is it connected to demonism? Because Satan is that type of being. The scripture is so enlightening. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 33. Their wine is the poison. Notice what's connected here. The wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of who? Ass. You'll notice that dragon, serpent, and water is all connected throughout the scripture. Why is the dragon connected to a serpent? Because do you know what the word dragon means? It actually came from a Latin word. Your King James Bible was translated from Latin, actually. It's a superior Bible that came from Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and all kinds of translations compiled together. Some of them are actually rare today. That's why modern Bible scholars, their translations are inferior, because they don't have such rich sources that the KJV translators had back then. But aside from that fact, Let's continue on right here. The word dragon came from a Latin word, which actually meant huge serpent. Huge serpent. And also another interesting fact, which some of the people already talked about here, but the word dinosaur, you know where that word dinosaur came from? It came from a word which back then, back in the medieval era and early eras, they called it little dragon, little dragon. And then the word dinosaur actually came out eventually later on in life. So you see dinosaur, dragon, and serpent all connected together. That's why in this teaching, when we talk about the dinosaur, it's connected to Satan. You'll see that it's connected to Satan. Dinosaur is connected to dragon. It's connected to serpent. It's connected to Satan in totality. We're going to look at Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12. This is extremely plain right here that it connects it to Satan. Revelation chapter 12, and we will read verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, we will read verse 9. Where the movies try to show Jurassic Park, mankind living with dinosaurs, it's literally going to happen at the tribulation, which I taught at a previous video. But let's look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old who, serpent, called who? The devil and Satan. Notice right here, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into where? The earth. See, in Revelation 12, sometime in the future, that dinosaur is going to come down, and he's called Satan. It's connected to Satan. Now we're also going to look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. That's why you got to understand this. The dinosaur is a cursed creature. It's a cursed creature that's connected to Satan. You might say, I don't believe that. Well, did you forget your basic Sunday school class? What did Genesis chapter 3 state? Look at Genesis chapter 3. And we will read verse 14. What did God tell the serpent? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So what is that prophecy about? That prophecy is actually a prediction of what's going to happen at the millennium about Satan. 
Some people think that the snake originally had legs and it lost its leg and that's why sl slithering on the ground. That's not what we teach. What we believe is this is a prophetic reference of how God will bruise the head of the serpent sometime at the future at the millennium. That's the curse that God put upon that dinosaur. Satan, he is what? He is covering the class of dinosaurs, you've got to understand. So the dinosaurs, you've got to realize this, their animal kingdom is represented as a cursed kingdom because it's connected to Satan and they have a, and their prophecy, the dinosaur's prophecy, is what's going to happen at the millennium. But before we look at what's going to happen in the millennium, let's look at Psalms chapter 148. Psalms chapter 148. If there were dinosaurs that existed, then one, they existed during the time of Lucifer. How do you know that, preacher? Because we already covered Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, he covers that class. And he was on that world before Adam. And he covered that kingdom. So we see that the dinosaurs can be covered right here. So if they do find evidence, if they do find fossil evidence of a, a very aged bone uh, that belongs to a dinosaur, then we don't have any problem with that because this is pre-Adamic and Satan, he covered that kingdom. Of course, there's also another teaching out there that dinosaurs are fake, they're not actually real. I, I can go for that one too because the fossil evidence of evolutionists, you gotta realize, doesn't amount more than to a garbage can for hominoid, uh, hominid fossils, you got to understand. It's actually really bad. So it's a lot of guesswork on dinosaur bones. But I'm not going to get into that detail. But there's another teaching over there that dinosaurs lived in harmony during the time of man. And I can go for that as well. We're going to look at Psalms chapter 148, <clears throat> and we will read verse 7. Leviathan and dragon. Dinosaur was contemporary with man. Psalms chapter 148. And we will read verse 7. The word of God reads right here. Praise the Lord from the earth, e what? Dragons and all deeps. Look at that right there. Also, we're going to look at the book of Psalms chapter 104. Psalms chapter 104. So you'll notice that it's not referring to demonic creatures. It can actually refer to literal creature. So there are some people who find some strange sightings about the Loch Ness monster and Ken Hovind gets into all that about Leviathan and Behemoth and it can still be alive today. And that is actually very, very possible. You might say, why? Do you know why? Because I could be wrong about this, but it is a large percentage. Almost 90% of the ocean is left undiscovered. Not only that, Another point is, a second point is, if you go to uh, the Asian countries, Pacific Islands, they caught a lot of strange, weird creatures. And if you look at those strange, weird creatures, they are actually the greatest evidence against evolution even. Because if they find some animal that looks weird, they automatically assume it's a transition from, some, from a fish to perhaps an amphibian. But then you're going to find an animal like that that's contemporary and alive today. So their fossil evidence is actually a hoax. It's actually a fairy Amen. tale for little children. So we're going to look at Psalms chapter 104 and verse 26. There go the ships. There is that what? Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. So notice right here, it does not have to all the time refer to Satan. It can refer to regular creatures. The only problem with just Ken Hoven and other creationists that follow along is because they don't know so much Bible, they automatically assume that it's only referring to regular creatures. It has nothing to do with demonism. It has nothing to do with Satan. It has nothing to do with the cursed creature. No. We already saw Isaiah 27, Revelation 12, and Genesis 3, that when the Bible says serpent, leviathan, or dragon, and especially behemoth at the book of Job, that's referring to Satan. That's not referring to some innocent dinosaur. Don't confuse an innocent creature with an evil being. 
So we can see right here that dinosaurs could have lived contemporary with mankind at that time. And yes, it's very possible today too. It's very possible today. There's so much left undiscovered. We're also going to look at, now we're going to close it right here. Let's look at Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 25. Isaiah chapter 65, we will read verse 25. Remember the devil's curse? Dust shall be the serpent's mate. That's not referring to like baby Christian, amateur Christian, wrong Christian teaching that the serpent lost legs and crawled on the ground and eat dust. That's not what it's referring to. Besides, the serpent. <laughs> look at Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 65, verse 25. It's a reference to the millennium in the future. The Bible reads right here, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Okay, so we know that's referring to the millennium, when the animal kingdom is restored. But there's a particular animal kingdom here, and it's not an innocent creature. We're talking about the cursed type of serpent, the cursed type of dinosaur. They shall, uh, and dust shall be what? The serpent's, the serpent's meat. See, that didn't happen yet. This did not happen yet. This is a prophetic reference to Satan of what's going to happen to him at the millennium. Dust shall be the serpent's meat. You know why? He's literally going underneath that dirt. And he's going to rot in there for a thousand years in that bottomless pit. <clears throat> We're going to look at Psalms 104. Uh, excuse me, Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalms chapter 91. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 13. Remember, God's going to bruise the head of the serpent. So he's going to bruise the head of the serpent with his feet. And Mel Gibson, the Catholic uh, sympathetic guy, he gives this weird video clip where Jesus stomps on the head of a serpent. That didn't happen. That's future, millennium. So many Christian preachers are making that mistake and teaching something wrong. Psalms 91 verse 13, Thou shalt tread upon the lion, and what? Adder. Adder. He's going to stomp on that serpent. The young lion and the what? Dragon. Dragon shalt thou what? Trample under feet. God's going to trample it. Look at that. So Isaiah 65 and Psalms 91. It's a prophetic reference to this destruction. So we learned several interesting things. One, there could have been dinosaurs that lived in the pre-Adamic world because Lucifer was in charge of that class of kingdom. Two, there could have been dinosaurs that were contemporary with mankind after the fall and even today, which is left undiscovered. A lot of strange things happening. Loch Ness Monster or whatever types of dragon or large serpents or dinosaur you might find. In fact, that's why creationists, they ha their greatest evidence is that they find these findings where there are footprints of humans next to the footprints of dinosaurs. A third thing as well, the third thing we also learn from this lesson is that the dinosaur, dragon and serpent, is not all the time an innocent creature. It is a cursed creature connected to Satan. And a lot of it was prophesied in the Bible and he will be destroyed. We see that dinosaur is connected to dragon and serpent. We see that right here all over the Bible. 